Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in a spiritual life by Edgar Sheffield Brightman, published in 1942. We're going to take a look at Chapter 2. We're going to take a look at Spirit and Personality, and uh, we'll begin by taking a look at Block 1. We're going to look at uh, Number one, note one, definition as dunamis potentiality. Bretman mentions Hegel's Begriff as the comprehensive ideal person. He says spirit is an attribute of conscious personality. Spirit is potentiality of personhood. It is potentiality of personhood. It is a dunamis potential power of personhood. He gives us the terms of unspiritual equaling sensations not mastered by the ideals and spiritual as sensations that are mastered by the ideal. We have the potential ability to become spiritual and to master the given or the sensate by the ideal. Now not to spirit as subjectively independent or cooperatively dependent. In other words, the spirit considered as relation. There are four aspects of subjectively independent spirit. It is a cinnamon for life. Two, it is a thumas energia. It is a spirited aspect of seeking to actualize value. It is posited telos the directed impulse of personhood to create. It is Noose's mindset of needing to go out of the self creatively, in a creative way to actualize value. There are also four aspects of being cooperatively dependent in spirit. And number one, that means uh, to have that outgoing desire for ideal value. Then to have the... Uh, conscious attitude toward ideal end as part of going out of the self and then the creative intent to actualize axiogenetic tendencies in reality and then fourth it's the act of contemplation which desires to construct the holistic sign model of kingdom and raising up those axiosoteric axiogenetic tendencies to becoming axiosoteric event. And then through we take a look at this dunamis potentiality and relational practical wisdom lead to energy actualization. Reitman says this is obedience to God. It's concern over the actual existence of value. It's a contemplation that bears fruit. It's a taking up of the task of the good. It means actualizing that principle that animates personality. To go out of the self to create value. So that gives us the theoretical look of those three moments of potentiality, practical wisdom, and actuality. And we want to look at uh, how that comes about by moving through the incarnate spirit and reaching immortal spirit in block two. The incarnate and the immortal spirit. Again, he begins with Hegel. And Hegel's notion of object, objective spirit is a spirit of society or the spirit of the state, which embodies law and morality as a collective intersubjectivity. That's the way that Hegel puts it. It's a, it's a collective intersubjectivity, which represents society. It is state as living organism, in other words, because it is an intersubjectivity. Two, we take a look at this... Uh, life that aspires to be concrete and godlike. Human personality is never holy. Spirit, says Brightman, spirit lives in concrete personal soil. It becomes concrete. Temporal occasions are in need of imprinting by the IDOS ideals. The IDOS ideals function as signs for the self. Oughtness asked to be taken up and obeyed. We are to imprint reality with the IDOS ideals. Therefore, note three, objective spirit 
plus incarnate spirit equal immortal spirit. Spiritual good is in and of and for personhood. Personality is the temporal carrier of spirit. That's a key notion for Brightman. Personality is the temporal carrier of spirit. It is actually immortal spirit that seeds spiritual ground. The seeding is carried by personality as the prophetic word, calling all persons to spiritual vocation. Our praxis includes the proclamation of prophetic word. So we've got a chance to look at the theoretical moments of potentiality and then incarnate and, and immortal spirit, at least to block three, where we actually reach concrete organization of the real. We reach actuality. We looked at, we looked at theory in block one. We looked at incarnation in block two. Now we look at actuality. Potentiality and practical wisdom. External objects are potentialities for actual value occasions. There are four stages of potentiality for reaching actual value occasion. We begin with present conscious experience. Then we have an awareness of references for value aspiration, like those axiogenetic tendencies. And then we have the rise of ideas through Aristotle's Takunta threshold of dialogue with others to lift the rise of ideas. Then we take up that outgoing intent to develop ideal value, the desire to go out of the self. That leads us to the four stages of practical wisdom for reaching actual value occasion. We move into this outgoing aspect. And we begin with the, the means for actualization, the field of choices. And then we develop a kinetic energy, which arises in the self to create energy actualization of value. Potentiality becomes elevated, says Brightman, to phronesis practical wisdom. It becomes concrete positing. It's a specific positing of cooperative praxis with the divine mind. That's what takes place. We move into a Elevation of potentiality to concrete practical positing or practical wisdom, phronesis in the Greek. Therefore, three, actualization of the ideal through cooperative praxis. We strive to realize lasting value. Lasting value equals value claim that has been raised up to true value through praxis. Through outgoing desire, we seek to create a coherent life of value. Coherency is always emphasized by Brightman. It's the holistic, coherent, coherent model that we seek. Therefore, spirit equals a system of value. It's a system of the posited real. It's a system of the posited real. And then we reach that concrete organization of the real. We reach that step of energia actualization, the living realization of personal ideal. IDOS ideals are sign-like means for realizing intrinsic value as fulfilled. That's Brightman's equation. IDOS ideals, grouped as a model, are sign-like means for realizing intrinsic value as fulfilled. We transition from hope to reality, to actuality. So we get a great look now in Chapter 2 on how Spirit is personal because it is a cooperative effort with divine mind. It is individual personality and it is cooperative personality and it is, it is transcendent personality. It is that unification, that cooperative effort to actualize value that takes place. We looked at theory of potentiality. We looked at incarnation of spirit in reaching that immortality of proclaiming the prophetic word and then actualizing the real. We do build a system of the real and we actualize that system of the real. So in this lesson, I think specifically 
we could probably take a look at uh, for the best uh, encapsulation of this encap encapsulated look at this lesson. Probably block one, note two, the relational aspect of spirit is the best thing to look at. Those four aspects of subjectively independent spirit. Spirit is life. It is spirit of life. It is uh, a spirited aspect of seeking to actualize value. It is a teleology that is posited by the individual in order to create value. And it is a noose mindset that wants to go out of the self in a powerfully creative way. And then it's four aspects of cooperative dependent spirit. Because we do take up that outgoing desire for ideal. We seek an ideal end. And we have that determination to actualize axiogenetic tendencies in reality and raise axiogenetic tendencies to axiosoteric event. I think that's the best area to concentrate on in this lesson. Usually it's not block one, but I think it's block one, note two. I think that's key to the lesson, really. I think it gives us a great picture. The relational aspect of spirit is being brought up here. Because it is relational, it is also personality-based. It's personalism because it is relational spirit. It is personalism. Brightman's personalism is relational spirit. That's the key axiom here. But I think that's our concentration. The eight aspects split into two groups of four. And uh, it gives us a great second lesson of looking at how Brightman's system has to be personalism. It has to be acquiring personhood. And personhood means moving a self toward actualizing value. And if the self moves toward actualizing value, then the self achieves spiritual personhood. And Brightman says that's the goal, to achieve spiritual personhood. Not all selves achieve spiritual personhood. But for Brightman, that's the key. Achieve spiritual personhood and create a intersubjective spiritual personhood within society as well. Both of those aspects are taken up, the individual and the corporate, because there is that intersubjective aspect of spiritual personality. But all of it has to move toward actualization. It has to become concrete. For Brightman, it cannot remain in the abstract. It cannot, it should not remain in the abstract. It should obey the oughtness of divine mind. It should obey the oughtness of divine mind. That all plays a role. So that's going to wrap up this lesson. It's pages 38 to 69. It's really all of chapter 2. And we'll pick up next time with chapter 3.